Hi folks, welcome to Right Outside with Big Bow Outdoors TV. I'm your host, Matt Propelka. We have a terrific episode lined up for you today. BBO field staffer Brandon Sullivan is going to take us through a season, all the way from shed hunting through some summer scouting and then up into the tree stand with him. And uh, believe you me, it's an exciting hunt, so you're not gonna wanna miss it. After that, we're gonna head back into the BBO kitchen. We've had some viewer feedback around our canning episode last year. A lot of interest in canning venison. And um, part of the feedback was we didn't quite go into enough detail. So we're gonna go ahead and head back into the kitchen, do a little more of a detailed version of canning venison, uh, a terrific recipe and a way to be able to store your venison and use a number of different ways. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Well. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's jump into Brandon Sullivan's year and see if he can bag that big trophy whitetail buck. BBO field staffer Brandon Sullivan is obsessed with whitetail deer. Whether he's shed hunting in the early spring or scouting fields in the summer, he's always looking for a way to put that big buck in his sights. Right up here, up on the hill. He's gonna stay on this hillside, hit another trail, and then I'll get into the thick pines. Easy walking, actually. Good betting, though. It's hard to film with freaking Y108 player in the background. Huh? Hey, DJ. <laughs> Sean's still emotional. <laughs> at its finest. Like a little kid. <laughs> Felix, what's your favorite animal? White tail. What's your favorite color? Moss Hill Infinity. Do you run? Do you run? No. And I hate golf. Just for a beer. If you had to run, where would you run to? The fridge. <laughs> yeah, I'm running in the woods and start guy. That's a wrap. Now that the fields are getting green and the bucks are starting to go into velvet, it's a great time to go out and scout just to see if that big buck is out there waiting for you. Go. Didn't have any luck. Switched areas tonight. Hoping um, deer are gonna be coming out, heading towards the cornfield. Acorns are dropping in here also, so there's lots of food. But he was in here last week and shot a doe.
This is Chuck White from Bucks and Bows Archery. Whether you're a beginning archer or a seasoned veteran, we can meet all your archery needs. Bucks and Bows Archery is a Matthews Bowtech Elite Archery and PSE dealer. Bucks and Bows is a full service archery pro shop. Whether you're looking for that new bow customized to your exact specifications or simply need fine tuning of existing equipment, we have the technicians and pro staff to get the job done. I'd like to personally invite you to stop by and check out our wide selection of bows. We hope to see you soon. ABC Glass and Mirror is your full service commercial and residential glass specialist. Whether you need custom shower enclosures, same day screen or thermal pane repair, a new tabletop, or a commercial storefront, call the experts with over 30 years of experience. ABC Glass and Mirror is fully insured. They're located on Route 8 just off the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Stop by and visit our friendly staff today. For the past 15 years, Blue Mountain Environmental Management Corporation has been dedicated to reducing environmental impact, preventing workplace injuries, and limiting our clients' liabilities. Our staff of environmental scientists, engineers, and technical specialists are committed to providing innovative safety solutions, comprehensive environmental consulting services, and source testing to keep your business compliant with ever-changing regulations. Blue Mountain Environmental, the leader in environmental services. We're back with BBO field staffer Brandon Sullivan. He's got a big buck right in front of him in this thicket, and he's just playing a waiting game to see if he'll be able to let an arrow fly. Look at that mass! Oh, is 
said I hit him a little bit back, but since he's quarter away, it's a great, great exit one. Look at the palmation on him here. What a giant. Wow. Couldn't be any after. Now we just gotta figure out how we're gonna get him out of these woods. Wow. I don't even know what to say. I'm so excited. Congratulations, Brandon. That's a terrific buck. Clearly a lot of hard work went into that harvest and uh, we're all pretty excited for you. So while you try and get that out of the woods, we're going to turn our sights to the BBO kitchen. Uh, head in there and I'm going to uh, do a little Tom Sawyering. I'm going to get my daughter Abigail and her husband Luke uh, to do a little canning of venison. We have a deal set up where everything that they can, they get 50% of. So uh, it's a pretty good deal and uh, we're going to do a little more of a detailed dive than we did in our last episode. So uh, pay attention. This is clearly something you can do at home, and I think you'll want to give it a try after seeing how easy it is. So off to the BBO kitchen. So last season, we put together a segment on canning venison, and it was really well received, but we got some feedback some folks that had asked us to maybe include a couple more details. So I thought I would reshoot this segment and I'm going to use a couple of guinea pigs, my daughter Abigail and her husband Luke, uh, and I'm going to walk them through the process going through most of the details. That way we'll see everything from soup to nuts. So first thing we need to do is make sure that we have our jars all cleaned out and set aside so that they're dry and we also want to inspect the rims for any uh, chinks or breaks in the glass to make sure that everything seals. And the second thing we want to do, um, got to make sure we're using a pressure canner. You cannot water bath any kind of meat. There's not enough acid in it and you'll kill your family. Uh, we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that you are using a pressure canner and it's always important whenever you're using a pressure canner to inspect it. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, you want to make sure that your pressure gauge is reading at zero. The second thing you want to do is make sure that your release valve is free and clear. So you just hold it up to the light and you can squint your eye and if, as long as you can see the light through it, uh, you're safe. And this is just a real, uh, it's an important safety precaution. Obviously, uh, a pressure cooker without um, any kind of a safety release is essentially a bomb and we don't want to be doing that in our kitchen. We want to be as safe as we possibly can. So, so now that we've gone through all of our safety, we're going to go ahead and begin to chop up our meat and get it into one inch cubes and we'll get them into the jars and take you to the next step in the process. Stay with us. Okay, so we've got our meat chunked up here into uh, one by one inch uh, cubes. We've got them in a stainless steel container nested inside another stainless steel container with ice cubes in it and that's keeping the meat at a nice temperature. You don't want to get it too cold because then you'll have trouble heating it up in the pressure canner. On the flip side, you do want to make sure that uh, you keep it at least chilled throughout the entire process. So. Uh, as we're putting this meat in, we're going to add a half tablespoon of canning salt and a half tablespoon of beef bouillon. Uh, and you wonder what I'm flinging around here. Since we do want to leave one inch of headspace, we're going to use a handy dandy measuring tool. And what that does is that allows you to kind of look real quickly and say, okay, we're close to headspace or we're not close to headspace. So uh, we're going to use on this particular tool that goes to one inch. Uh, we're going to use the highest setting and as you can see it's really going to come out as long as we keep it right below the rim here uh, that should give us enough headspace. We'll go ahead and we're going to add the spices all at the same time. So we're going to pack uh, eight of these up which is what the pressure canner will hold and then we'll add all the spices. So we'll do it almost in an assembly line fashion. So the next step in the process is going to be to add 
salt and I happen to like using the canning and the pickling salt so I do like to use canning and pickling salt it just dissolves a little bit better than normal salt uh, whenever I'm canning so I would encourage you to go out and buy it it's not much more expensive or different from a price comparison so so I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of beef bouillon and that beef bouillon should add a nice flavor um, that just helps as you're preserving meat over a long period of time it's nice to have a little flavor in there so again in our factory like way we're just going to run down it and I'm just going to fire half teaspoons into each of these. One, two. This is Chuck White from Bucks and Bows Archery. Whether you're a beginning archer or a seasoned veteran, we can meet all your archery needs. Bucks and Bows Archery is a Matthews Bowtech Elite Archery and PSE dealer. Bucks and Bows is a full service archery pro shop. Whether you're looking for that new bow customized to your exact specifications or simply need fine tuning of existing equipment, we have the technicians and pro staff to get the job done. I'd like to personally invite you to stop by and check out our wide selection of bows. We hope to see you soon. ABC Glass and Mirror is your full service commercial and residential glass specialist. Whether you need custom shower enclosures, same day screen or thermopane repair, a new tabletop, or a commercial storefront, call the experts with over 30 years of experience. ABC Glass and Mirror is fully insured. They're located on Route 8 just off the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Stop by and visit our friendly staff today. For the past 15 years, Blue Mountain Environmental Management Corporation has been dedicated to reducing environmental impact, preventing workplace injuries, and limiting our clients' liabilities. Our staff of environmental scientists, engineers, and technical specialists are committed to providing innovative safety solutions, comprehensive environmental consulting services, and source testing to keep your business compliant with ever-changing regulations. Blue Mountain Environmental, the leader in environmental services. Okay, so next step here is really critical. Uh, this is important to making sure you get a good seal on your jars. And you're gonna wanna take a paper towel, just put a little bit of uh, moisture on it, and you're gonna run, a, run it right around the edges here. And as I do each one, I'm gonna move them. So again, uh, keeping the assembly line theme going here, I just wanna make sure that I'm getting every single one, not skipping any, so I tend to move jars around a lot looks a little goofy people wonder what I'm doing but I rarely get lost in my steps so I guess you really can't complain too much about that now we're gonna put wide mouth lids on each of these and then we'll go ahead and put rings on them and you want to just lay these lids on um, some folks like to soak the lids and boil them since we're pressure canning and we're getting these up to such a high temperature, you don't necessarily need to do that from a, um, uh, a health perspective because basically you're going to be killing anything that could possibly get in there. Uh, but some folks like to boil the lids. Uh, it also makes the rubber a little softer around the edge because all these ball lids really are is a piece of, piece of metal with some very thin rubber right around the edge and that rubber sits right on the end of the jar and eventually as things cool down the air the air which has been expanded through the pressurization process begins to depressurize and it sucks it back in and just pulls that right on top and keeps it firm so it's pretty ingenious our ancestors knew what they were doing as you're putting the rings on you want to get them on there tight enough finger tight okay so you don't necessarily need to crank them on there super tight. You just want them on there finger tight enough to hold this in place, but not so terribly tight that you're not allowing any of the gases to, exp uh, to expand and, and escape, especially if you've overpacked one a little bit. You wanna, you wanna allow it the ability to, to vacate some of the pressure or some of the air and some of the liquids that might be inside the jar, but not a ton of them, otherwise you're just boiling it over. But you wanna just a little bit finger tight. All right, so um, the pressure canner calls for three quarts of water. So I'm just gonna use quart jars instead of getting too carried away with uh, trying to measure things out. Again, it's not 
truly exact. I guess if you got really carried away, you could again create a problem or blow something up, which you don't want to do. So I'm going to add three quarts of cold water. And then generally, in order to keep things from getting real cloudy, uh, the jars, because we live in western Pennsylvania, we have hard water. I put some white vinegar in with it as well. So I usually add a couple of tablespoons of that. This was just the end of this jar, so I went, or this can, so I went ahead and put it in there. So that's it. Now we're just going to stack these in here, get it up to speed, and, uh, and then we'll come back and let you know the whole process. So we want to make sure that you have these in here as close together as possible without touching. That's kind of an important thing to back into each other because this water. Well, I've got a basin full of uh, soapy water here and uh, we took our cans out of the pressure canner last night and we let them sit overnight because you really want to let them cool down so that they're sealed. Um, you certainly don't want to be touching them a lot or putting them in a drafty area because you can either mess up the ceiling or take a chance on cracking the glass. So always let that pressure canner go down on its own. Uh, let, it, let it go until the indicator drops all the way in and then it's kind of safe to open it up and at that point Put the jars out in a non-drafty area and let them cool for, you know, at least a couple of hours, if not overnight. I like to let them cool overnight. And so uh, we now have a couple of, couple of batches here. We've got one more to do, uh, which I'm going to do this evening. But I did want to kind of show you the important last step. And this is critical because I have missed this last step and wound up with a very stinky pantry. So you get your kitchen basin or a bucket or something full of just kind of lukewarm water and you want to take, take each of your jars and give them just a nice little rinsing, uh, wash them. And the reason you want to do that is sometimes during the canning process you'll see your jars uh, maybe spill over a little bit and if that happens you get some of the juice on the outside. Uh, which is not preserved and is open to the air and unfortunately that can lead to a very unpleasant smell in your pantry and I can tell you that from personal experience. So 
Uh, I'm going to continue doing the rest of these jars, uh, but that's about it. So we're going to send you back to the show and hope you learned something. Gave you a little more detail than we have uh, last time we did some canning last year. And uh, hopefully this will be something you can do yourself. This is a great way to store your venison. You can make venison barbecue, stroganoff. Uh, just saute it up with some peppers and onions. There's just a million things you can do with it, and it's a nice way uh, to get it out of the freezer. And uh, that way you're making room for some more as the season rolls out upon us. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. We had a lot of fun in the kitchen, and uh, as you can see, got a lot of venison can. Uh, it's a little bit of a labor-intensive process, but the end product is certainly worth it. In fact, we got about 24 pints of venison, and uh, that was a doe that I had harvested across the power line. Uh, two rear haunches and two shoulders uh, resulted in 24 pints, so a lot of good venison uh, that we'll be eating over the course of this summer, whether it's barbecue or stroganoff or however we want to do it. Uh, I'm pretty excited to dig into it. So you might want to give that one a try at home. And uh, certainly, if you have any questions, shoot us a note on our blog. We'll be happy to help you out. Until we see each other again, you keep stepping right outside your back door.